We're now moving from China to Japan. Now, Japan is an island archipelago, which makes travel and communication throughout particularly difficult. However, uh, we tend to think of Japan as very isolated. It was actually very open to new ideas, primarily ideas coming from China, uh, until we get the Europeans entering the picture, at which point they will try and shut out the Europeans as much as possible, but they do not cut off contact with China. They do go through periods back and forth through their history where they're not trading much with China, but there's always some opening there. So we see cultural influence. This results in the hybridization of ideas while remaining militarily protected by sea. This means that they can focus on developing their culture rather than being concerned about an invasion because the closest major nation state, China, would have a heck of a time trying to take over Japan. After all, they would have this massive sea crossing and you would have to get enough people to Japan to actually have a formidable invasion. And it's really not a possibility for the vast majority of history. So without this threat of invasion, of course, culture can be a focus and can flourish. And we start with Japan before Buddhism. We'll get to Buddhism in Japan, but Buddhism will be a major division within Japanese history and will be used for our purposes to divide the early history of Japan from the later history. Now, before Buddhism, Japan is primarily Shinto. And just like with other Eastern faiths or Eastern philosophies, you can have people following both Buddhism, Shinto, Tao, Confucianism, a whole number of different ideas, as many as three different, uh, what we would in the West term, religions at the same time. Now, in terms of Shinto, they emphasize harmony of natural beauty and a poetic appreciation of reality. This will come out when we deal with the tea ceremony and when we deal with a couple of temples. Natural events are considered to be manifestations of heavenly energy. And they focus on the affirmation of family and tradition, the affirmation of reverence towards nature. And that is going to be a key element of Japan. You have to have reverence towards nature. This is an island nation. They have very limited resources. So the fact that they create a religion that focuses on taking care of those resources makes a lot of sense. That way they don't end up like Easter Island, which deforested the entire island, or Italy after the Romans, or uh, large swaths of England, or Ireland, where the resources got eaten up in ancient times and have never recovered. They also look to physical cleanliness, as well as festivals held in honor of Kami. And Kami are... Uh, for lack of a better term, spirits. These could be ancestral spirits, but these can also be natural spirits, uh, spirits of trees or rivers or other things. So that's Shinto. That's where we start as we start to look at Japan.